Continuing on with the idea of designing for our MVC project, we have to identify what we're going to be creating in our model part of the project because what we make inside the model will be seen inside the view component of the actual program because there is that direct relationship where the user is interacting with those pieces vis-a-vis -vis the controller and so we're going to need to be making that here and so we're going to be making a factory project as part of this MVC program that we're making and so the factory is going to be making some what's-its and some widgets now with the idea of what's-its and widgets these are just little things we're going to be making they're going to be a quick little simple idea but we first have to identify how they're going to be put together and so our factory object has some components to it as well so we have to do some decomposition with that and so our factory is going to have a list of what'sits and widgets that belong to it. So we'll have a what's it list and we'll have a widget list to identify how many what'sits and widgets have been made. And then so we can keep track of this, we wanna have a little bit of a resource for this. We can actually have some relationship ideas and so we can make sure it's okay to build them. And so we'll have a what's it resource and a widget resource. And the what's it, let's see here. For a what's it, we're gonna go ahead and give it, it'll have a name. The what's it will have a sign and our widget we'll have a weight and our widget will also have a description. Now, these are just quick little throw together ideas where we're actually, we have an idea that there's a relationship between these components that we're using and the actual model and viewer we're gonna be putting together inside the MVC project. Normally when you're doing a bigger scale project, you'd obviously have a little more detail on this where we're gonna describe these components here. And so with the idea of the factory though, again, we have the factory object. It has its component pieces of a what's it list and a widget list. So it can say these are how many we're making. And then a resource count so we can actually identify if it's, we can actually build one of those objects from what is available for it. Our what's it's gonna have a name and a size and our widget will have weight and description. Now in the model component, we're gonna specifically have getters and setters for all those variables because we want to be able to actually create these objects. And so we'll automatically want to generate the getters and setters for each of these data members that we'll be using on this so we can make sure that we can access them as needed inside the view vis-a-vis -vis the controller which will send that information back and forth from the view to the model component pieces and have an access to that inside its own controller object itself. So we have our basic idea of the design for this. We have a factory that has some component pieces, a what's it which has its component pieces, and its widget that has its component pieces. We have those basic ideas. And so with this structure, we're gonna head and put together the code for them. So let's go ahead and we'll switch to the project itself. And we're gonna go to our model. And in the model, again, we're just make a brand new class for this. So this is gonna be a MVC factory. And so we have our what's it and a widget. And so in here, we have our MVC factory. We have our what's it or widget Java files. And we're gonna go ahead and inside our factory again, we have the idea that we're gonna have a list of both those factories. Now again, keeping with our good design practices, all of our data members are gonna be private. All of our accessor methods for that will be public. So let's go ahead and get those created right here. And so we're gonna create a private array list of what's it objects and we'll have a private array list of widgets and again we have those um, data members right there so we have access to them again we have the red underline right here because we have not imported the array list from java.util so we add that import to the file right there that takes care of the array list again with array list we want to identify that we have the type specified within the angle brackets every time we see the word array list we should see a type of it right after that inside the angle bracket signs so we have our private data members now for this class. We're gonna go ahead and now create our constructor. And our constructor is gonna initialize all of our values just like normal. And so we'll have a public MVC factory. No um, parameters needed for this. And we'll go ahead and do that. And we'll instantiate our lists and set our resource count variables to the whatever we want them to be to start off with. So we've initialized our two da um, object data members. We're gonna initialize our private um, variables as well for the resource count. So our widget resource count equals 30. What's it resource count equals 10. So we can only make a few what's it's versus we can make a whole bunch of re, uh, widgets. The idea behind this again that we want to have some idea that we, this is not going to be able to be used later on. We can actually say oh we're out of resources we need to get some resources or something like that. But again when you're actually doing a bigger scale project we'd have some more ideas for the data members. This is just the idea of showing what we can do though with an MVC and using that basic idea of designing for that. So we now have a constructor for that, MVC factory. We have a method that we'll have to be able to use that will create a what's it object. We'll have to have a method that will create a, a widget object and perhaps you know adjust our resources as well. We have those ideas that we'll need to do that, but first we have to go ahead and so we'll need to have our make widget method and our make what's it method. So those will be both be public methods because they'll be accessed outside of this very 
<clears throat> excuse me, those will be public methods because they're going to be accessed outside of this class. They'll be actually being called vis-a-vis -vis the controller. They'll call this method from that and then use it on there. We'll have a public Boolean method, make widget. And it's a Boolean method because the fact we're going to return true, whether or not it's possible to actually make it. So we want to have, again, the idea that it's okay to do this. So we are going to have an if test right here at the beginning that we'll check to make sure it's available for that. But first we have to define a Boolean variable inside the method. So we'll have a Boolean can make widget equals false, turn can make widget. Again, we wanna have the definition. Um, we have a method that returns a Boolean value. We want to have that value ex uh, explicitly defined and with a value assigned to it because it's a method variable. We can't simply leave it as a undefined value inside a method. And we have that immediately set right there at the beginning. So make widget will make the widget for it if it will return true if it's possible. And then if it can't, it return false. The idea behind that is we want to make sure we actually check to make sure the resources are available. So let's do that check within this. We do an if test. If, and then we will say the widget resource count is greater than zero, then we are going to make a widget. And so we'll make a brand new widget again. So we have the idea that we have our basic list of the, um, the objects that are components within the factory object. It's what's set in the widget methods. Now that we've got the idea of our objects defined, we have to go ahead and identify some of the methods we're going to need. And so if we look at our factory object, um, we are making the what's it's in the widgets and we have the what's it list and the, uh, re what it's the resource. So we're going to need to go ahead and have a method that will actually create a what they'll uh, create a what's it when called by the actual view itself. And so we'll have a make what's it. method and we'll need to make widget method. And these two methods we're going to need are going to, need to have some parameters passed to it. We'll um, obviously need to be able to pass with the what's it object. It'll need both its name and its size to be passed to it when we create the what's it. And the widget will need a parameter passing of it with its weight and description. So we'll need to have methods that will cr uh, create those objects based on that. And so we'll need to have a couple parameters that go along with that. And so they'll have a name on the what's it and a size, and the make widget will need a weight and a description. And so because the make um, what's it method and needs a name and a size, and we also need to be able, as part of that, we'll need to make sure that we have enough resources to make them. And so we'll need to make sure we check within that method itself that it goes back and checks against the resource for the what's it and for the widget respectively. Because it's gonna be um, checking that, we'll wanna make sure we have a specific way of having that a way of showing some success with that. And so we'll have that built into our method as well. And so we wanna go ahead and have that identified as part of that before we actually go and write the code. So we'll keep that in mind as we do that. Moving back to our code. Looking back at our code, so we have the idea of our make widget. And so we're gonna to need to pass it again with our widget. We have the idea of a um, weight and description. So the weight is going to be a double value. And so we'll have a double and weight as its name and a string description. So we'll have those two parameters that will be passed to the make widget button. And again, the idea that we have the uh, can make widget will be set to false just by default before we check to make sure it's happened. So we can have that idea of a return on that. And we, this is the, so that we have an idea that if it's, if it's successful, we have an action happening. If it's not successful, we have a separate action happening. And again, that's just the idea that we can have some information by passing that simple Boolean variable um, as a return value. We have access to that. We can come back to it and grab some resource, or no, excuse me. So we can grab that Boolean variable and use that to then um, get information about what the actual project is going, if we were successful making the project or not, and using that inside our actual view of our code. So we have the basic structure right here. We'll take that make widget, takes a weight and a description. If that um, resource count is greater than zero, we'll then create the widget object and then decrement our widget resource count as needed because we are then going to be making a widget. And then we we'll want to, after we decrement that widget count, we'll have to add that widget we just created to our widget list. So in order to do that, we'll have to go ahead and now that we've got this stub of a method right here. We can then create the what's it constructor that has that weight and string description as part of it and use that as needed. So we'll go ahead and hit save on this and we'll make go to the what's it and create, or excuse me, or we'll go to the widget and create the constructor for that that takes those parameters of a weight and description and creates an object for that. So we go over here to our widget class and we'll have a private 
double weight and a private string description. And we'll have our public constructor and it'll take a double weight and a string description. And inside this we'll pass the this.weight equals weight and this.description equals description. Again, the this dot allows us to have that internal reference to the current object we're dealing with. And then we pass the parameter we can see by the color identification here that this weight variable is being assigned into the weight of the object we're creating. The description value is being assigned into the variable of the description of the object we are creating. So again, by using the this dot, we are specifically identifying that we are sending that information from the, the object, the parameter itself, to the object we're making. Um, because we have these private data members right here, we'll also need to get some accessors in, um, for them. So we'll make generate our getters and setters. Since we're doing this fairly quick, we can just go ahead and right click on this, go down to our source section and generate getters and setters. And we're going to want to generate for all of them. And we want to have it after our constructor and first getters and setters. So it's default just like that. And there we have our getters and setters. So we can actually get the values from that and set them as needed if we want to change those values for our project. Go ahead and hit save, we've got this. This now gives us, so we have a constructor for this, we can only create a widget object if it is being passed a weight and a description. There is no default parameter, so we can't simply just make a widget that has nothing attached to it. So we have to make sure we have those information in there before we actually create the object. Same thing is gonna to need to be happening now inside our what's it. Our what's it has the idea of a private int and the what's it has a size, so private int size and a private string. And so we have those two components for it, the what's it has a size and a name that's attached to it. We want to go ahead and also make a constructor for it, again matching the idea that it has the string and its int attached to that so we can create the object of a what's it, passing it the name and size that goes along with it. So we'll have a public object constructor of a what's it, and we will pass it a int size and a string name. Again, inside the constructor, we will say that this dot size equals size and this dot name equals name. Again, so we're passing that reference for that the one that size parameter that is sent to the constructor is assigned to the actual object itself. The name parameter is assigned to the name for the object itself. So we, again, we always are using that this dot as a reference for it. So we see that we're specifically talking about this project right here, excuse me, this what's it right here, and not some random what's it that we could potentially be creating or using. Again, just like we did on the widget, we want to generate our getters and setters for this. So click up here, right click, go down to source, choose our generate getters and setters. Again, we select all after, not name, but after the what's it constructor, put in the getters and setters in that order, and boom, we're good to go. Hit save again, so we have that all available. And we now have our stubbed out class for what's it and widget, those quick little just default uh, objects we'll be creating as part of our project. And now we can go back to our factory project and actually use the methods to create them since we now have constructors for both of those. So let's go ahead and go to our factory object right here. And inside our MVC factory, again, we have our make widget where we pass it the weight in the description. And so we first check to make sure the resource count is greater than zero, making sure we can actually make said re um, widget object itself. And so if we can make the object, we're going to go ahead and create a brand new object, a brand new widget that has that weight and description attached to it and assign it into our list. So we'll go ahead and say that widget, current widget is a new widget and we will pass it as parameters, the weight and description. So we create our widget object. We then want to decrement our resource count so that we show that we have used a resource for that. And so our widget resource count goes down by one and our object that current widget needs to be added to our widget list. So we'll go ahead and I'll say our widget list and we'll add our current widget to it. Again, since we're using an array list and just adding it, it'll add it immediately to the end of the list and can make widget to true. And it will return it then outside of that if test right there. If it does successfully make the widget, it sets, it sets the value to true. If it wasn't able to successfully make the widget, it is still set at false and is therefore just returns the appropriate value as associated with that. So we now have our make widget method. We'll do the same thing now for our make what's it method. It's gonna be a public method, Boolean as well. It has a double parameter, that's gonna be an int parameter, and that was the size, and a string parameter that is the name. Save that. Again, because this is a Boolean method, we wanna create a Boolean variable that we can assign a value to, and then return that as our first part of our creating the method. So we'll have a Boolean, and we'll call it can make what's it, and assign it to false by default. And our last line of code for the method will be to return that variable. So we have a method that immediately works no matter what. It sets up the false automatically for that because it, we want, we're assuming that it's not going to work the first time and then we'll check to make sure it can as we do it. 
And so we have that right there. We'll then add our if test just like we did on our what on our widget method. And if our what's it resource is greater than zero. Or in fact, we can say this if our what's it resource is greater than five. We'll do that, make this a little bit more uh, complex. So if the what's it resource, what's it resource count, excuse me, if our what's it resource count is greater than five, then we want to be able to say what's going to cost, say, five units to make this. And so we'll say a what's it, current what's it is a new what's it. And we will pass it the size and name variables that we just um, received as part of the parameter from this method itself. And we will widget, res we'll take our what's it resource count. And we'll say minus equals five. So we're taking out five away from our current value and making sure it's okay to actually subtract that much from it. Because again, we want to make sure that we can't go negative on that because we want to be you know, making sure we are actually creating that object within the resources that we have allowed. And then we'll add that what's it to its list. And so we'll say our what's it list dot add and we'll pass it our current what's it. And we'll set our can make what's it equals true. Again, keeping with the idea that we are, um, we've checked that resource count we have um, made the what's it resource, or we've decremented our what's it resource count after we've made the what's it, added it to our list, and we're still sending it to true, so it's actually made the what's it, and returned the can make what's it. So we have our two methods that we're using to make the widgets and the what's it that go along with this. They return a, a true or false value based on whether or not there are enough resources to actually make said object. If it does have enough resources, they'll create the object accordingly. If not, returns false, and we're good to go. And so we have those two major methods right there that we've got on that. Um, we also need to have on site our MVC factory, we'll need to have a getters and setters for both of our um, what's it and widget lists as well as for our different resource counts because we might need to be able to add resources to this later on. So we'll go ahead and go back up to our declaration section right here, right click on that, go to our source section, go to generate getters and setters, and we want to select all of those. And again, we want to put these after the constructor but before our other methods because that's where it's going to go. So we'll go ahead and put that in after MVC factory. We have our getters first, then our setters. And just go ahead, hit OK, generate it just like we did inside our WhatsApp and widget classes. Go ahead and save that for us. As you can see, we have all of our methods attached to it. And then we have at the bottom of the class here our two Boolean methods that are allowed to make the widgets and WhatsApp based on the actual resources that are available. And so now that we identify that we have our model created, we can now identify what we're going to need for our view. Since both of our objects right here have a uh, method excuse me, have a constructor that takes two parameters, we're going to need to have at least two different fields that identify what is going to, where you're going to type in those values for it. And we'll also have a label for those so we can clearly see that this is going for this and then a button for each of those that we can say make a what's it or make a widget. And so we have a idea now that we're going to have to have some res what resources we are going to need inside our view. And we'll go ahead and continue with that in just a moment.